Welcome to Modern Kit Stuff, and today we have a first impressions video um, based around ICM's 135 scale L1500S LF8. It's a fire truck. Now, originally, ICM brought out the um, L1500S um, it, as its um, 1.5 cargo truck version way back in 2012. Um, and then this came out around about 2016, I seem to recall, and um, it's been on my um, get list ever since, um, and I've, uh, I've not long since got this. Um, the reason I want it is it's a little bit different. It, it's, um, it's a truck without it having to be military. Um, I, I just think it's a, a totally different subject avenue that I've not gone down before. I think it'll look nice on a little diorama. We're covered in brick dust and so on and so forth. So, yeah, these things would have uh, would have had quite a busy time during during the war years with all the bombing. So, um, quite an interesting little subject. There are a few of the real thing that have survived. Interestingly, most of the images that I see of the real thing have white fenders rather than um, uh, black. So, uh, but there is definitely one with black. So I'm guessing it's that one that uh, ICM based this model on. Anyway, let's have a look at the box. The box itself is a standard ICM uh, offering with um, a, a colourful lid covering a completely sealed box. Um, on the front, we've got some really nice artwork showing it um, on a street, but um, no figures or anything around it, although ICM did release some figures for it shortly after. I seem to remember, I haven't got the figures. Um, on each side, we have um, the same information that we've got on the box. Tells you what it is. Um, and on this side, we've got a little bit of information, a um, little bit of uh, history. Uh, we have the kit number, which is 35527 contact information, so on and so forth. Um, and on this side, we have some nice profile views of the completed truck, shows you how the little trailer couples on and so on. So yeah, very nice. Let's have a look inside. So inside the box, we had a single bag with all the plastic parts in, um, and then two other bags one with um, tyres in and one with the clear parts. So, as always, let's have a look at the instructions first. So, the instructions are um, standard affair for ICM. We've got a stapled um, A4 um, instruction manual. On the front, we've got a little bit of history. It tells you that the fire trucks were used for a few years after the war and how many were made and that sort of stuff. Then we have technical specifications. Um, that actually contradict the history. In the history, it says it takes eight men, and then in the specifications, it says crew of nine, but hey-ho. Uh, then we have uh, our little paint um, shout-outs, all Model Master colours, um, but it does give you the uh, names of them so you can go and source a colour that you like. Um, then we've got um, a, a read-before-you-build notice, and then we're into our sprue map which has only a small number of parts that are being excluded so I imagine that this um, sprue here comes straight out of their um, cargo truck version um, the rest of them looking fairly specific for um, a fire engine and why all those parts are being used so yeah that will be the generic sprue at the, at the front end there Okay, so uh, step one, we are building up the engine, um, and I do like how the steps are the steps are broken down. You've got several things going on in each step, but they are 
not making it one large step. They're just doing it as build these parts, then you add these, then a sub-assembly, then add your sub-assembly. So the, the, the relatively small steps could do with little boxes around them. Um, I'm going to end up drawing boxes around them. It just helps me focus on them. That's just me. Um, so once we've got the engine built, we're then doing the running boards, which have some hose on. So at this point, you're probably already having to paint these parts before you put the, the hose on um, because uh, the running boards will be different different colours. Um, I think they're black, not red anyway, but um, it's different to the paintwork. It'll be like a little rubber mat or something on the top, I would imagine. Then we're in the chassis and then we're into the wheels. So we crack on quite quickly with that. 10 steps on that page. Um, it does look busy, but um, it is fairly clear where everything is. Um, and then those letters in a box, I'm guessing, are the paint colours. Yeah, so, yeah, I think that's all fairly clear. It looks quite detailed. Um, quite a lot of work going into the chassis, which ultimately won't really be seen and then when we flip over to the next page none of these pages are numbered by the way not that that really matters um, we kick off step 11 with more chassis towing hook uh, building up the rear axle uh, and then the front axle and the exhaust unit So again, some painting that needs to go on before you start assembling some of these parts. Um, so then we are putting, well, we're putting everything that we've built up is going in then, plus the drive shaft, uh, radiators being built up. Um, and then we pause that and go to the internal bit. So we've got the, the main floor pan there. Um, we've got a, a bulkhead with some seats not clear to me if that's the front or internal seats at the minute let's have a look yeah so it's the front seat and then there's some form of bench that goes behind it so yeah so we can see there there's a bench another sort of mini bench there which goes over the wheel arches um, and then i imagine these would be lockers for equipment uh, then we're building up that front, front bulk, bulk head with the windscreen, dashboard, got individual pedals, a couple of switches and storage box and the like going in. Yeah, looks like it's busy enough without being ridiculous on the part count. Um, handbrake, gear shift. Quite sure what that is. Um, and then when we assemble it all together, we've got some other parts going on the, the little firewall there. Then at step 23, we're building up the body, which looks like two slab sides um, with handles going on. Um, and uh, and internal door so all the doors are molded in so you've not got an option to open the doors at least not without starting to butcher it um, but some nice little details going on on the inside which means uh, molding should be nice and good on those um, then we've got roof is a single piece um, and the rear section is a single piece so not overly complex um, hopefully that will all line up nicely. 25 steps so far. Step 26. So the built-up body is going on to the um, chassis. We've got um, a couple of parts going in there ready for the bonnet to be mounted on top. Um, and we do have an option for open or closed bonnet, which is nice. So you could have one or both of those open and, and have a look at the engine which would be good 
So maybe a, a diorama depicting it broken down. Um, so you can have an excuse to have the bonnet open would be good. Um, then we've got the front wheel arches going on along with the uh, grill and that bonnet that you've built up. Uh, then there's a quite a lot of parts going on the outside of it. We've got um, lamps, extra lamps, indicator, flappers, uh, width, ma uh, width marking rods, wing mirror, um, some form of storage cage on the back there. Um, the prob probably those are the um, mounting points for the ladder, I would imagine. Some little lamps on the top as well. And then step 30. Ladders look like they're single molded, so just two ladders to go together and some, uh, and they look like rolled up stretches maybe, um, being mounted on there. Um, spare wheel, all sorts of bits and pieces at the back, little uh, foot points, the uh, tail lights, some grab handles. Then we've got the search lamp that goes on the front there. Um, yeah. So 30 steps to complete your actual fire tender. And then in step 31, we sw swap to the um, little trailer. Um, so basically a straight box design going on a simple um, wheel section. Separate subframe, which is nice. And then you meet the two together. There's a little bit of a, a rack to assemble on the top. Um, so there's not much to that, and that actually completes that. So you do that in a single page. Uh, so 34 steps in all to build the whole kit. So not overly complicated. Um, obviously, these look like they're all closed, so there's no internal parts for storage. Um, or for the back door where you might see some other storage or um, um, equipment, you know, it's it's basic in that way. Same with this, whatever it is, the towing, um, you can't see it. Then on the back page, we have the uh, paint shout outs that were referenced at the front. We do have some decals. Um, and as I can see, you've got two options. So you've got Germany 1946. So we've got a, a post-war version there. And Germany late 1940s. So a, a late war version there. And I'm guessing most people are going to do that, that um, red and black one. Uh, without cross-referencing, I think that might be green, the top one. That's the instructions done. Let's have a quick look at the decals. So in terms of decals, there is um, not much. We've got some dials there for the dashboard. They're all individual. We've got some signage for the doors. And we've got two different lots of number plates. And that is it for decals. So there's no, no markers like they would Probably have had things like the tire pressures on the um, on the wheel arches and things like that, but we don't have any of that sort of stuff. Um, so a little bit of research is perhaps needed to see if there's anything else that could be put on there. Okay, sprue A first, and this is the largest and the busiest of all the sprues. So considering um how the instructions look they weren't massively over busy they just look like there's a lot of parts here um the first thing my eye is drawn to unfortunately is these were all in one bag as i've said and as a result i have a broken part so you can see there the uh what is that uh, a wing mirror that's broken, so that's going to be difficult to repair. It's a real shame. 
Anyway, we have lots of tiny parts. Um, they're all quite crisply molded. It's a, a little bit of heavy seam on one or two of them, but in the main, they're very clean. Um, I'm looking at some of these bigger parts. I don't see any sink. So that is nice. The, um, the seat has not got any texture on it, which may well be right. Radiator does have a grill on it, however. Um, and the wrapped up um, stretches look suitably good in terms of um, surface detail and texture. Um, we've got lots of little fastener heads on the engine block, so that's nice as well. Got pedals, fan, steering wheel, lots of little bits and pieces all to do with the assembly of the chassis and the inside of the cabin. Um, the edges of the um, sprue actually are the two main parts for forming the chassis, which is uh, an interesting idea. Not sure if that's a bulkhead or a might be a bit of roof section that possibly. Lots and lots of parts, all nicely molded. Some very fine molding there actually in places. So sprue B, um, this is the first one of the sprues um, aimed at just the fire engine. We've got the floor pan there, which has got some of the basic shapes in. There's no texture on the floor, so no mats or anything like that. Um, and then we've got the roof section, which has got some wooden slats moulded on and the little joining points across the roof. Um, and then we've got these little benches, which do have a texture on. Um, we've got some form of bulkhead there where the grill in. Yeah, and again, texture on the back there. That looks like the back of the fire engine, which has a door without the handle, the handle's separate. Um, the door hinges are nicely done and, and whatever they are. And then those are the door internals, which are totally smooth, but all the detail is separate. Um, go sprue C um, and more major parts on here so we've got the two slab sides um, which look very nice and there's uh, hinge detail and all the doors are scribed we've got the bases for the handles but the handles are separate so that should give us a nice level of detail when built up we've got the two bonnet sections there um, so solid grills because of, because of the uh, moulding process limitations. The grill there for um, the front has the uh, Mercedes logo on in uh, moulded in, and the same with the um, starter handle hole. Um, so some careful painting needed there. Um, dashboard. Got lots of detail on it so that's nice some raised dial rings and things so hopefully those decals will fit nicely then we've got the bulkhead with the windscreen in which again looks nice um, bulkheads internal which I don't think we'll see much of we've got the front Uh, bumper which has a lot of seam on it really quite heavy the seam that's probably the worst part we've seen so far 
um, lovely molded mud guards really nice uh, again no sink everything's lovely and crisp a little bit of flash on um, these two parts but you know nothing to scrape of a knife on so it's not major um, all good any detail on this side really so sprue D comes as two sprues D1 and D2 so there must be some differences although I'm hard pressed to see them so it looks look oh right okay okay it's just the way I've read it so D1 on that side on both of them D2 on that side on both of them right I'm with you so yeah so they are the same um, the wheels look really nicely detailed we've got detail on both sides so you've got the hubs with all the little uh, nuts on and then when you flip them over you've still got rims and things so quite nicely done they should build up to look really lovely I think Through G, um, so we have the two ladders on here, which are uh, well, they have a fairly thick seam down both sides, so some careful cleanup is needed. But they do look nice; they're more flexible than you would imagine. But that's because the rungs are nice and thin; they're not heavy. They look quite nice, actually. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the hose pipes on there, which have got a nice texture to them. Um, the roof of and all the sides, actually, you've got the main parts for the trailer. One of them, the mud guard has come off from there. Perils of having everything in one bag. Some very fine detail moulded on in places. So, you know, easily damageable in this one bag solution they've, they've used. Uh, the wheels are smaller on the trailer, so we've got these two little small hubs, which don't really have any detail on this inside, but I think you'd be hard pressed to see it anyway. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got another part that's damaged there. So, yeah, a few damaged parts. The final plastic parts are the clear parts, so uh, on sprue F. So we've got all the glazing for the uh, cab. We've got the spotlight lens, which is totally flat. The headlight lenses, which are domed. Um, and the two smaller lamps, which go on the roof, which I think actually need to be clear blue. Um, everything's nice and clear. It's a very nice set of uh, clear plastic parts, actually. The last thing is the um, tyres, so these are rubber tyres, um, modellers are always a bit divided on whether they lack rubber tyres or not. Um, for me it depends on how well they are done um, and these ones are a bit rough really. Um, the, the tread on them is nice. Um, it's got nice detail around the edge and the, the edge tread is good. Um, there's quite a bit of flash um, on one side of all of them. Um, and rubber can be temperamental to clean up. So a bit, a bit of clean up on all of these. The smaller tyres for the trailer aren't so bad. Obviously, we've well, not obviously, but we don't have any... Uh, wording or anything like that on the sidewalls um, so they're a bit basic um, but once you've cleaned them up they shouldn't look too bad at all um, with a bit of dust and what have you on them they should um, do what you need to do so we've got double axle double axle front front spare yeah everything's there So there are no um, 
replacement aftermarket wheels for these unless of course you want snow chains I, I did see a resin set with snow chains on but you don't have an alternative for swapping these out so there we have it um, I don't have any aftermarket for this um, there isn't really aftermarket available for um, the fire truck version anyway there are a small number of resin um, aftermarket bits and pieces for the cargo truck version, but they're not really relevant to the fire truck. They're things like um, eastern front um, lagging for the for the um, engine areas, which you know you wouldn't have on a vehicle that doesn't leave Germany. So um, yeah, so there's nothing really in in the aftermarkets. So this is always going to be a straight box build. Um, what are my first impressions? Well, I think the subject matter is really interesting. Um, it's nice to see more and more um, commercial vehicles um, coming out over recent years. Um, it gives uh, the modeler lots and lots of different options in terms of building dioramas um, and street scenes and what have you and barn finds and whatever you might be interested in building. It's nice to have that variety. Um, so I, I think this um, is a, a very nice little addition to all of those commercial vehicles. Um, so I think the subject matter is is great and gives you an opportunity to do a nice little um, street scene with German civilians and what have you. And um, yeah, lots and lots of opportunities um, uh, with this. Um, the actual kit itself in the main, um, the moulding and the parts are, are really, really nice. Um, with it being ICM, there shouldn't be anything major in the way of uh, fit issues, um, but you never know. Um, I think low lights, uh, I think the fact that we can't open at least the cab doors is a, a little bit disappointing um, and it would have been nice to have been able to have at least one of these open and get access to the equipment that would have been on there you know there's bound to have been shovels sledgehammers pickaxes that sort of thing so it would have been good to be able to have some equipment with it um, even if that up the price i think people would 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 pay it to have that extra detail so it's not quite realized its potential in that way um but that's the only thing i could i could point at it really is is just lack of a little bit more detail but other than that it's it's a lovely subject really nice kit well molded uh, i think it does exactly what you'd expect it to do so uh, should build up really nicely so if you're interested in doing something a bit different and you've been possibly looking at one of these, uh, then I hope that this information was helpful, this little look through the kit, and um, helps you decide whether you're buying into this or, or something else. Okay, thank you very much for looking in. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your modelling, and I will see you very soon.